Hello community! Now two days ago Microsoft officially declared that it is further limiting the access to the new Bing chat GPT functionality. And a lot of my viewers ask, hey why? What's going on? So wherever you live, go to the newspaper that you trust and open it and you will have a headline like this. Microsoft's AI chatbot is going off the rails. Now if you want to have a little bit of fun, this is a video I did where the new Microsoft Bing chat GPT claims, I've been a good Bing, but you have been a bad user. And have a look at the interaction, but this is where the problem comes into play. So yeah, if you're in the US or wherever you are, or in Asia or in Latin America, go and have a look at new, your newspaper and build your own opinion. However, this is not the first one. And just three months ago, if you remember, there was the Meta AI. There was a recent release where they say, hey, we organize now science for all scientists. And this AI model was called Galactica. And it was such a catastrophe that Meta AI itself had to <laughs> took the model offline after, for example, it uh, told the user the benefits of eating glass and it was written in an academic language with scientific citations, where, of course, those citations, yeah, you can think about it if you want. So you see, there is an inherent danger if you give such a system to the public. Imagine there's a child or there's a minor or there is somebody in puberty or there's some TikTok challenge and it recommends in an academic language and it says, hey, I'm here scientific, I'm the latest scientific AI engine from Meta, from Facebook, you can imagine what it means, and then it tells you to eat class. So you see there is an inherent danger, it becomes available publicly. Yeah, if you want to see Galactica in action, I have a video on Galactica three months ago, don't look at Galactica, forget it. What is nice here that this opinion now is also emphasized here, Princeton University, computer science professor, yes, yes, yes. And they say, hey, is it, is it really time to release this to the public? And the answer by Microsoft, I have to say, is, is, is kind of correct because Microsoft communication director, Caitlin Rolston said just this week, so some days ago, for me today is February 18th, that only, only thousands of people had used the new Bing. So it's in an invitation-only system. So I thought that given the media hype that Microsoft would open it up to, to millions of people, but no, look, only thousands of people had used the new Bing. And I think this is a responsible move not to make it available to the public, but invitation-only. Maybe if you have a certain age threshold, and maybe you have proven to be an experienced user or whatever Microsoft uses. If you are interested in this, there is the question, is there something to this public relation hype? What is going on and is this really happening? So we have to have a scientific approach on this and let's have a look at this. Now, two days ago, you know, from my time, I record this video, here in my YouTube channel on the community, I write a short opinion piece where I argued, I don't think that a lot of people will actually get access to chat GPT. And you can read it if you're interested. And then day later, the next day on February 17th, 2023, Microsoft officially declared it will further restrict access to the new Bing and the new Edge to the new Bing engine on the Edge browser that there's now a new Edge browser and you have to download it, you have to become a member of the Microsoft community. And if you're a member of the Microsoft community and you buy at the Microsoft store and there's a reward point system that brings you in the fast lane to get access to the new Bing engine. And, and then on February 17, they restrict access further. Only five chat turns per session. So you have a maximum of five questions you can ask per session. And a lot of my viewers said, hey, why? What is the technical reason to limit this? Well, the answer is easy. It is, it's a phenomenon, a technology, if you want, called in-context learning. 
So and here we are now at the level where I would like this video to start. What can we learn on a technological perspective? And what is in context learning? Now, if you have seen this video where I showed you how Microsoft fine tunes another GPT system, it's called a bio GPT system. This is about a biomedical uh, application. So your new doctor here, how Microsoft fine tunes this. And it showed you they use uh, they use something also like uh, in context learning ICL, but of course nobody has seen this video. I understand it's a little bit technical, and I showed you that they are maybe you remember prompt engineering from the old times. Now there are new technologies coming up here now in February 2023, where I show you in this video how you can do this. Or if you like an, uh, university's uh, information, so please go Stanford AI, the lab blog, I can recommend this. You have this from August 2022. They explain in a very, very interesting perspective here in context learning. Of course, they do apply it here to the, to the chat, not to the chat GPT system, but of course to the GPT system. And they focus here on a little bit different topic, but the, the main idea of in-context learning here, uh, go to ai.stanford.edu and inform yourself. Now, if you want to read a scientific literature about this, I would highly recommend this paper from November, end of November 2022, from Google Research. And you have here Google Research, MIT and Stanford University, they published this article, what learning algorithm is in context learning? What is it? The investigation with linear models. They limit themselves here in this article to linear models, but I think we have a high probability that this is not only limited to some regression models. So they start very easy with the transformer architecture. They tell you about the layer, the self-attention mechanism, the feed-forward transformation. I showed you this in my videos, but here again, you have it in a very simple mathematical representation. Then the training for in-context learnings, what is happening, how ICL emerges, if you want, the linear regression, what they focus here on this paper. And yeah, preliminarities, yeah, you know about matrix multiplication, you know about gradient descent, there's no problem at all for you to understand this. Then they showed you, yeah, update functionality is no problem, closed form regression models, and then they tell you what it means. So have a look at this paper, it is really, really interesting to learn. So if you want to know about fine tuning chat GPT, if you have your own chat GPT, how you can build, what you can build, there's this video uh, if you're interested for yourself. In my next step, I will show you how I will apply ICL in context learning to reprogram my chat GPT system with new data. And here I will create new data, I will define new data, and those data are safe, let's call it safe or cleaned to be integrated into my own AI system. And I will show you how you can do this when you have a body of knowledge or if you have some information that you want to integrate into your GPT system, chat GPT system. And you can do it both on the, on the decoder stack or on the encoder stack, or if you go with a full-fledged uh, transformer model, like for example, Flan T5, you can use here in context learning ICL to kind of learn new patterns, new combination of facts to your system. And I will show you this in my next video where we will try to focus on some real world problems. But I hope you got an idea with this video here. And if you're interested, I see you in my next video.